Hi guys, Christian here from Architects CIA. Welcome back to my channel. In the last few videos, I've been teaching you guys how to do a few things in AkiCAD and in the process, I've had to use layers, layer combinations, graphic overrides and all that good stuff. So I thought, you know what? The best way to show you guys a practical example of how these tools work is to show you from a live project I'm currently working on so you guys can really see how I've used this you know these tools in my own everyday practice and you probably need a, a thing or two in the process and you know pick a few tips so let's get into it what you see on your screen here is it's a project I've been working on for the past two months or so and in that time I've had to you know present this design I think so far we've done about three presentations so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through this project and show you the area where I've had to use layer combinations and graphic overrides and all that stuff to present this project in a way that you know, makes sense. So this is a, a design for a school, all right? And I can't really say much about it because we're still in the very early stages of the design. But the building you see on the far right here is going to be an assembly hall and next to it will be an admin building. And then next to it, just here, we're going to have a classroom block and a cafeteria. And we're going to have hostel spaces back here. And you know, like I said, we're still in the early stages of the design. But based on what we've done in presentation, I've had to you know, lay emphasis or focus on one building at a time and really explain what's going on in the building. And let me just give you an example of have been able to focus attention on one building at a time. So if I just go to the view map here and go to this folder I created for sites and I just say sites 3D. So this is the entire site we have here. And I also have a folder somewhere down here. Yeah, this folder I created for isolated 3Ds. And if I click on this assembly hall 3D, we're going to see that what I've done is that I've made everything else just a solid color, almost like a block model, you know. And the only building that retains its original color and texture is the assembly hall building. So whoever I'm, whoever I'm explaining this to can really focus their attention on this particular building, right? So I've been able to do that and I also did one for the admin building, all right? So same thing for the admin building, everything else has a just a single color or a single texture or material and just the admin, admin building is in focus which really you know, focuses attention on, on one building at a time and I also did one for the classroom block so same thing for the classroom block all right so I really like the way you know I did this because I can easily switch between buildings while I'm talking about it so I can switch from the assembly hall to the admin to the classroom block now these are the three these are the three building out of everything else we've had to you know we've had to talk about so far as we've gone in the project and you know we're talking about them in relation to the entire site so i can easily switch between these buildings so let me show you what the graphic override combination looks like if i just go to a graphic override combination down here and let me just I have I have a combination for the classroom. I also have one for the admin building and one for the assembly hall. So let me just go to this edit rule and show you what it looks like. So what this rule does is that the first rule I have says element type and all types. So what it does is that it has given everything in the design or everything in the model a single surface color. So I just picked plastic laminates, which is the one I prefer to use. And then I have a, a rule under here that says does not contain. Now, the, the naming of these rules might be a little confusing, but what this rule is just trying to say is that everything else in the model will have a single surface material except this layer combination for my classroom 3D. All right, so if I do the one for, say, my admin, you'll see that everything else, including the classroom, will have a solid color, but the admin would be exempted, all right? So that's what this rule does. 
So the first row here says everything else to have is uniform surface material. Then the next row say okay exempts the classroom block from everything else. So that's how that row works, and that's how I've been able to get this. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so that's what I've been I've been able to do, and even within let me let me just go back to the assembly hall. And even within this assembly hall building, I can also, using a layer combination I created for AH for assembly hall, I can just use this assembly hall 3D I created. And what I've been able to do now is to just make everything else disappear. And we have just the assembly hall building in focus. So in case, for example, I want to cut a 3D section, I can easily, you know, do that without having anything else getting in my way so i can just you know cut the 3d section and you know right click and you know create a new 3d document without anything else getting in the way so this is just one of the ways i've been able to use you know layer combinations and graphic overrides to to really you know get what i want out of this project so let me just go back to the entire 3d Okay, so let me just show you another way I've been, I've been able to use this tool. So let me just go to the plan view. Let me just turn on all the layers. So Control L. I'm just going to click this select all to select all the layers, and I'll just click this show, and all the layers will be shown. I click OK, and if I zoom out, we have all, I have all my layers. Let's give it a little time. There's a lot going on in this in this design already. All right, so this is what I've done so far in this project, and I mean, just just looking at it, I mean, this is just absolute chaos because I'm the one working on this project, and I just feel dizzy just looking at this because you can see dimension lines just you know getting in the way of each other. It's, it looks it looks very disorganized, right? But with with a layer combination, I can easily just you know, clean this out and get the view I want at a particular time. So, for example, let me just go back to my view map and click on this site plan I created. And you can see that, you know, the, the view looks a lot cleaner. All those vegetation have disappeared, those dimension lines that were getting in the way of each other have disappeared. And I may also have to, you know, hide these grid lines, but let me just leave them here for now. So this looks a lot cleaner and that's because there's a layer combination I have here for site plan, right? And even within this, I've also created a folder here for all the buildings so I can treat them individually. So if I just look at, say, the classroom block, as you can see, everything else has been hidden and just the classroom block is in focus. And how I did that, let me just go back to layer. I've created a layer combination for CR and the way I named this combination is also very important. So if you see everything else here has been turned off and the only layers that are on are the layers for my classroom block. So I've named them CR first and then the name of the layer so that you know the, the naming is really crucial because like this I can have everything related to my classroom block in one area i don't have I don't, I don't need to have them scattered in different places which is just how you you want to organize your own layers right so same thing for the admin building so this is the admin building you can see everything else has been hidden so let me just go back to site plan and show you this is the admin building here and if i go to the admin building ground floor I can hide everything else and just the admin building is in focus. So like the classroom block is the same thing I did. I have a layer combination for my admin building and if you look, everything else here is hidden except the layers prepared specifically for what's going on in my admin section. So everything else here has been hidden, all right? Same thing for the assembly hall. So there's a folder here for my assembly hall. And just like the others, everything else has been hidden except the assembly hall, right? And even within this floor plan, I've also created a presentation plan, you know, for this assembly hall section. So as you can see, I have 
a nice looking presentation plan with shadows and the floors have textures and all of that and if i just go back to the generic floor plan here you can see that i have grid lines and section lines and elevation markers all activated but if i go back to the presentation plan everything else has been hidden right and i can just you know have the the interior of this assembly hall building clear so that anyone looking at it can see what's going on inside right and even i also have elevations that have, have created yeah, so I also have elevations that I've created for, for the design. So, so far, that's how I've been able to use these tools to organize this project in a way that, you know, I'm really comfortable with. And lucky for you guys, I have a few videos on my channel where I've really gone in depth and, you know, shown how these tools are used, all right? So if you want to learn about layers and layer combinations, click the video on the left. And if you want to learn how to design a presentation plan like this, click the video on the right. See you in the next one.